So I want to build a valve power amplifier at some point and we need to look at the, you know, gathering together the various components to build that thing up. Um, so we're going to look at the heater supply here or filament supply, depending on where you live. Um, and in particular, we're going to look at a DC uh, variant of a heater supply. And we need 6.3 volts, somewhere of the region of 4 amps, maybe a little bit more than that. But these are the, these are the kind of numbers we're we'll start to work with. Now heater supplies are generally AC, um, it's just a, just comes off a transformer winding and this is done because it's very simple um, and in the majority of cases it's good enough um, but for a hi-fi ap application um, there's, there's various issues that come with that that I really find difficult to overlook. Uh, and the, one of the one of the main ones is you get this filament flash. You know, when when you turn the power on, you get this uh, a surge of current in the heater just because its resistance is low, and uh, you get this flash. Um, and then it, the well known issue is that of course you've got fifty hertz or sixty hertz hum uh, that can get into your amplifier. And again, this is just not very good for uh, hi-fi application. Uh, and you know, for an AC heater, we need a we need a big transformer. We're looking at a lot of current, um, so we need a, a big transformer which tends to get hot. It can be kind of smelly because you're you know there's the varnish and things in there that's getting kind of hot, and they can you can get the fifty hertz hum, um, so they can be noisy and uh, they're also expensive. Uh, so what what can we do? Um, uh, to come up with a DC supply. Um, and it's not as easy as it sounds, you know, you think, okay, I'll just make a linear supply and uh, what's the problem? You know, it's just a just a power supply. But when you get down to these low voltages, these kind of currents, then the, the losses become a problem. You know, they become very inefficient. Um, you need large parts and uh, you're going to be generating a lot of excess heat. Uh, it's quite possible, but it's just a it's a yeah, challenging direction uh, just because of these issues. So this is another reason why uh, AC heaters are generally adopted. But what I want to look at here is can we modify an off-the-shelf switch and power supply um, for the heater uh, supply? And uh, of course, there's maybe some resistance to that initially because oh, switching power supply it's kind of noisy and that's going to be a problem, etc. However, if we if we add some additional circuitry to uh, filter the output, so we we take some of the switching noise away, um, then you know we should get things quiet enough. And then the other thing with the additional circuitry is that we can put a true soft start. Um, you know, you can do soft starts. You can do a soft start with an AC supply and you can do a soft start with a sort of traditional linear regulator, but they, they tend not to start at zero volts, um, so they're not ideal. Um, but if we do some additional circuitry, we can essentially do what we like here and, and do something pretty smart. Uh, and then we can also look at the regulation on the on the 6.3 volts. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at this, uh, this actual module, this uh, power supply module here, and see what we can do with it. So I looked at a few different switching supplies for this project here um, and some of them are more more suited than others. Uh, you know, some of them have got things like under voltage lockout or, or other protection circuitry that means it's not so trivial to adjust the voltage. Um, but this guy here seems to be the best contender at the moment. And this is just a cheap eBay supply. You know, I paid like £10 for this, including delivery. Um, but when you look at it, you know, it's a fairly sensible arrangement um, and I can't really argue on the components either other than the, the branding on some of these capacitors, you know, I'd be a bit questioning that. We might change them if this if this works out. Uh, but this, this uh, is looking like the, the best uh, way forward for now. And this is it's rated at 72 watts, uh, to kind of question that, but we're not needing anywhere near that. Um, and uh, so let's just power it up. Uh, and there we go, it's a 12 volt supply, six amps, and uh, powers up just fine there, no problem. Um, and what we, if you look at these kind of supplies, they're all 
how they how they derive the output voltage is all pretty much the same. They all use uh, a programmable reference here, it's a very standard device TL431, and we just have a re resistor chain to uh, give us the reference voltage of that, which is two and a half. So in this circuit here, we've got 20k and 5.1k. Now, if we want to get that 12 volts down to 6.3, then if we just go and change this resistor, if we drop that resistor down to uh, 7 point something key, then we should be good to go. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go and we'll just put a, a parallel uh, variable resistor uh, across that guy and uh, we'll see if we can adjust our voltage down to 6.3. Okay, so the circuitry with the TL431 etc is in this area of the board here. There's just some surface mount components there that deal with that. And so I've put in a a variable resistor in parallel with that 20k that we saw um, and that will allow us to adjust the voltage down <coughs> and I found when adjusting the voltage down I needed to uh, have a heavy load on and uh, so what I've done here is this is the this is a load that represents my valve uh, uh, current demand uh, so I've got one and a half ohms here in total and uh, these resistors are obviously very high powered. I'm trying to see if I can read the 200 watts they are, 200 watts each. Um, I, obviously we don't need that but this is just what I had available so um, ignore the dimensions there. Um, but we're able to adjust it down and if I turn my DMM on then uh, there's my 6.3 volts so I'm quite happy with that. Um, and this is a it's a flyback converter, so this is actually not a transformer. This is a coupled inductor, and what we might have to do, or what we might want to do, is to remove some turns from the uh, secondary inductor, and that might help us to uh, have stability while having a lighter load. Not that it particularly matters for our application, but uh, we might just look at that. It would, it would reduce some losses as well if we do that, so we'll come back to that. Uh, but all good, got our voltage there and I think uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll put this on the scope and we'll have a look at the the ripple and noise coming out of this thing. So this is our setup for measuring ripple and this is a kind of standard arrangement here where you maybe have sort of 20 centimetres of uh, twisted pair and then you terminate it with a film capacitor, there's an electrolytic capacitor there as well and then we go off to the scope and, I, and I'm actually quite amazed by the level of ripple coming from this supply. It's really very good uh, even before we do anything. Uh, so I was seeing, we're measuring somewhere just about 22 millivolts on the peak to peak ripple on the output there which is really for a cheap supply is uh, quite impressive. Uh, and if we turn up the uh, time base there we can see fairly fairly clean waveform and we're running about 38 kilohertz there so that's all good and and what we'll do is we'll uh, we're going to try and reduce this a bit further and what we'll do is we'll put a, a common mode choke like this on the output and then we'll have some filter capacitor after that and uh, we're going to do some other tricks as well to bring this uh, uh, junk down to even better levels so we'll look at that so let's take a look at the rise time of this supply then when we when we first turn on. So we've got the so scope set to single trigger and if we power on from the mains there we see that uh, the measurement's about 2 milliseconds. It says we're up to up to 90% about in 2 milliseconds and uh, if we look at the, the whole waveform here by the time it's stable we're maybe talking about 4 milliseconds. Um, and that sort of that's a very fast uh, turn on you know and if we try and present that to our valve uh, the heater in our valve that's just going to give the same um, uh, filament flash that we we talked about earlier so what we want to do is we want to have a slow start that um, turns this thing on over many seconds let's say 10 seconds um, we want to turn that slope into a sort of 10 second rise as opposed to a couple of milliseconds. So we need to add some circuitry to do that. Uh, and the other thing is, if, if, if we try to present this to a valve heater, there's actually no way this power supply would turn on because the, the uh, cold resistance of the heater 
presents such a heavy load that it's just it's never going to start. It's just going to go into current limit and never escape. So we need to kind of slow things down to enable it to turn on in the first place. Um, so let's go and we'll look at some circuitry that we're going to propose to add here and uh, see where that takes us. So this is the circuitry that I'm looking at then and uh, we can see the common mode choke uh, that I uh, spoke about before and then we immediately go into a, a film capacitor there, so a very low ESR capacitor and uh, we've got a bit more uh, bigger capacitor here, a big electrolytic capacitor. So this here is going to do a whole bunch of the filtering that we're looking to do to get that uh, ripple from our uh, off-the-shelf supply down. Uh, so that's doing the bulk of the work there. And then we've got uh, a series FET here. And uh, the main the main function of this is uh, to do our soft start. Um, it's going to do a bit of filtering for us as well, but the main function is a soft start. And what we see is that uh, this is configured as a source follower and uh, the gate here, the voltage on the gate is a, a rises slowly through R2 and C5. So that time constant there is going to be our soft start. And one of the difficulties we've got is that we need our gate to be maybe four or five volts above the source uh, in order to start turning this thing on. And with our 6.3 volts coming in, we're actually going to set that a little bit higher. We'll maybe set it about 6.6 .6 or 6.7 just to give us some overhead. But even that is not enough to turn this thing on. So what I'm doing here is using a LT1026. Um, and this is a charge pump uh, voltage doubler. So we get uh, twice the voltage here, uh, minus a, maybe a volt of loss. Um, so we're, we can expect maybe sort of uh, 12, 13 volts on this uh, point here and that's enough then to let us uh, turn this uh, FET on. Uh, now I've included another uh, a programmable reference here, another 431, and that's just to set the output voltage exactly. So we can set it exactly with this 500 ohm resistor uh, here, uh, just trim it for our 6.3 volts. Um, so that's given us some regulation. Now, it's a very uh, low bandwidth regulation, you know, this is not going to respond to any transients or anything like that. But we've got a fixed heater supply, it's just a, you know, it's just going to be a resistance. So we're quite okay with that. Um, so that's our circuit and uh, let's take a quick look at the layout here. Uh, so I've uh, designed a little board for this. Some of the, some of the uh, footprints are not shown here. Um, but we're coming in here and then there's our common mode choke in through the circuitry and then uh, I've got uh, some parallel outputs here that we'll just take off to our uh, there's going to be four valves in this amplifier so we'll just take these uh, ports off to the heaters and in, in the individual valves um, so this is the idea uh, take a few weeks to get this uh, board made up uh, and uh, we'll come back and uh, try it out once this comes back so here's our little boards then turned up and uh, no issues with that, quite happy with how they're looking. Uh, and so I have assembled one uh, and uh, that all looks fine as well. Got our common mode choke as we spoke about and I've put some ferrite beads on the inputs and outputs of that. And then also ferrite beads on our FETs and that just takes out the edge, takes the edge off any kind of sharp um, uh, and ringing or the like coming from that uh, main supply that we're going to use. So that's us. Uh, and of course, we don't we don't just arrive at this. You know, there's a, this is a this is the breadboard that uh, I kind of developed this from. So that's how it that's how it started life. And then we we go through and refine the circuitry and end up with a sort of smarter looking board here. Um, so we'll take this now. We'll add this to our our uh, little uh, off the shelf supply and we'll make some measurements on that. Right, so we've got our little additional circuitry added to our main uh, power supply here. Uh, and I've set the input voltage here to be just above sort of 6.6, there it is. Uh, and that just gives us some overhead on that FET, so it can help us with some of the filtering action and give it a bit of room to do its job. Um, and then uh, we'll talk more about that actually. We're going to we're going to do some other supplies here. We need to do an HT supply. 
and uh, we'll use a similar sort of technique with the FET so we'll talk more about that um, but measure output and uh, bang on 6.3 and we've got a very fine adjustment for that now with that variable resistor so it's really bang on uh, it's all good um, so we'll uh, connect this to the scope now we'll look at the rise time and we'll look at the ripple here we are then looking at full level on the scope and if I uh, just short out my capacitor uh, we should reset to zero there we go and then we'll see the soft start coming in there so we can see how slowly that voltage is rising up to the up to the six volts and we'll run another plot in a second we'll run a plot where we look at it over uh, you know we'll use the scope time to capture it um, but that, that looks nice and slow quite happy with that and here's a, a single capture here and it just shows that uh, from zero to full level uh, it's taken us 12.7 seconds so that, that's a reasonable turn on time I think I'm going to settle with that for now uh, we'll see how that goes you can always adjust it just by changing the capacitor value but for now we'll stick with that here we are looking at the ripple uh, this is after our circuitry and we're measuring peak to peak here 650 microvolts um, whereas previously we were 22 something millivolts peak to peak so it's a big big improvement uh, uh, I'd always like it to be better of course, I mean I really want to see nothing here but uh, given the circuitry that we're working with that's probably reasonable um, and I'm ignoring these very fast spikes here uh, these are uh, more to do with my measurement than anything that's conducted through here so I'm not really too worried about that um, so I think that's in a reasonable place and what we'll do now is we'll, we'll connect up to the audio analyzer we'll actually look at this waveform in the audio analyzer and we'll see what this looks like as a noise floor uh, in the audio spectrum uh, and see if there's anything to be worried about there here we are looking at the spectrum of this supply then so this is off the audio analyzer and we're going up to one megahertz here um, and so we can see a bunch of ripple down you know that'll be our 100 hertz and harmonics say uh, there and then we've got our switching uh, components up at the higher end but if we look at the levels these are all below minus 80 uh, which is like 100, 100 microvolts so very very low levels in real terms uh, we've got to remember this is not in the signal path this is purely to supply the heaters of our valves um, and that's going to be isolated from our signal path the isolation however is not perfect so we need to you know it's only when we build this thing we're going to see what uh, if any if there's any coupling uh, a going on to the the actual audio path of the thing um, so we'll see how that goes um, we could of course add fil further filtering we you know we could add filtering each individual valve or perhaps the input stage if, if we've got any of this uh, kind of stuff leaking through um, but we'll move forward for now we'll assume this is going to be good enough and uh, we'll see how it behaves so we've probably taken this uh, heater supply as far as we can for now and uh, we'll just put it to the side while we're working on other bits of hardware uh, for our amplifier uh, but just to wrap up here what I thought I'd show is uh, connect the output to a light bulb um, and it's just going to be pretty much the same as a, a valve uh, heater uh, so this is a 12 volt old school uh, halogen car headlamp um, and I've got a, an old school uh, multimeter here um, and I'm reading 5 amps full scale uh, and if we power up what we'll see is we start to draw current before the lamp lights and uh, so that's us heating uh, or preheating that filament see there's no light and then it starts to come on gradually as the volts are obviously rising here and then our current goes up to final value in this case somewhere just over 3 amps um, so that's working very smoothly and uh, that should treat our, our valve heaters uh, very very well um, so there we go so as I say we'll put this to the side for now and go and work on some other stuff